Hello, gorgeous seekers, and welcome to Moon Magic. We are here with the Leo full moon for 2020. Uh, I love this full moon. It's happening on February 8th into the 9th, 2020. It goes exact 2.33 a.m. Eastern time on the East Coast of the United States. So wherever you are in the world, that'll be going exact slightly different times. And this is really important medicine check-in time for us. The Leo full moon is going to be doing some really powerful work. Uh, so take a deep breath because we're going into some really big discussions about expansion and what safety means, uh, what authenticity means, and how we can feel more comfortable in a, the expansive state. So I know y'all are aware that we had a really powerful eclipse season in December and January. And January itself was really heavy hitting with the Saturn-Pluto conjunction and with the, the after effects of the eclipse season itself. And a lot of the energy we were working with there was in the very grounded sign of Capricorn, right? So we've been doing all this subterranean work, uh, working out the kinks, checking in with places where we we hold ourselves hostage, dungeon digging, as Martha Beck calls it. Uh, we've been doing all of that. Great. Wonderful. Um, and we've been emerging as Aquarius season has continued to evolve. We obviously had the Aquarius new moon at the end of January. And then it's, it's counterpart here, the full moon in Leo. We're activating a completely different type of energy, right? So everything counterbalances in this world, right? We, we are, it's a very reflective, connective, conversational world we live in. And so where we've been doing all that deep digging and that grounded energy of Capricorn, and we've been doing all that work with the Cancer Capricorn, which are very hidden energies in many ways. The way that we do the work of vulnerability, the way we do the work of finding security is all in there, right? So we've just been doing that. So the counterbalance to that is the Aquarius Leo axis, which is all about freedom and authenticity. If you know Leos and Aquarians in your life, I personally am a Leo. Uh, Aquarians are a really important part of my life. You'll notice that these two energies are very much about authenticity and authentic expression and being very expressive and entertaining um, and bold and loud at times. Uh, and I mean, obviously, that's the surface layer of the Leo Aquarian energy. But the thing with the Leo Aquarian energy is we're working with really essential archetypal things. We're working with the Aquarian energy of the collective of the people uh, of and also of revolution. And we're also working with the Leo energy of leadership um, and children and the heart chakra. So these energies have a lot to do with freedom and what we think of as freedom. Now, I know a lot of you, if you've watched your monthly reading with me, there was a ton of tower energy in the February readings. And I assured anybody who is getting that, that the way that the tower is working is very different than how it's worked before. And of course, in Aquarian season, I think the tower is maybe one of the most appropriate energies because Aquarian energy wants to disrupt, wants to disrupt old aristocratic hierarchies. And yes, we're talking at the cultural level, obviously, but we're also talking about within ourselves. And so this full moon is really fun because okay, we have the sun at 20 degrees of Aquarius and we have the moon at 20 degrees of Leo and they're hanging out talking, which is really fun and really vibrant, really bright. Now, these two energies are also, they're illuminating something here. The conversation they're having is about what the world looks like beyond our internal hierarchical structures. Who are you? Who are you if you don't have your inner dictator telling you what to do? You don't have guilt, old pattering, old knee-jerk reactions to say yes to things when you don't really feel it. Uh, who are you when you don't have that, the obligation containers. 
Um, and that works from both, you know, relationships, but also within yourself. So this Leo moon is going to be asking you that question. And, th and the thing that's happening here is that we are also doing some work with Mars and Pisces. So I'm going to just get all the, the degrees here, and then we're going to get into this whole, whole idea of being so expansive that your containers no longer exist, and then getting into sometimes the really scary, almost agoraphobic feeling of the, the limitlessness. So we have a loose trine with Mars happening. Um, Mars is hanging out in Sagittarius, has been for a little while. He's going to be at 25 degrees of Sagittarius doing um, a trine with the, with the moon here, the Sapphire trine, um, which is kind of lighting up our fire energy again, right? That creative fire energy, which, I, you know, we lack for a little bit uh, during the month of January. So getting into February, we're having a little hit of that which is lighting up your creative drive, right? Your your dreamy, creative, playful vibe. Because if there's one thing about Leo energy is it's very tied to children and creativity and 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 the lightheartedness with which things can be created, not the seriousness, not the heaviness. And I also find that really interesting that Leo is tied to this idea of children and creativity and also leadership. Um, we think about when we lead with joy, with that that kind of kind, loving energy of a very young child, how powerful that is. Uh, so we have this beautiful trine activating our creative urges, you know, our desire for freedom, for liberation, for play. Sagittarian and Leo, Leonine energy are very much about getting messy, finger painting in life, playing. Um, there's a wildness, there's an innate wildness to these energies. So that trine is lighting up the inner wild child within us um, that wants to stick their hands in a vat of paint and <laughs> spread it all over the walls. I would actually even argue that Aquarian energy also desires that. Now, all of this is conversing. Um, the sun is also conversing with Neptune at 17 degrees of Pisces, and that's a quincunx. Quincunxes are really interesting. They, they're a little, they're not, they have this dialogue going on about balance because they're not balanced really it's a five degree separation rather than the nice math of three or four or six or anything like that that we normally have right so a five sign difference here is about where we're finding equilibrium or a lack of it um, but i also think it's really interesting to have a leo moon um, in conversation with neptune and pisces because these are very dreamy energies um, they aren't going to be focusing so much on hardcore practicality in this conversation. They're going to be focusing on the expansiveness. Now, here's the thing that this is where we're going to loop back, back around to what was really coming up for me when I started looking into this Leo full moon. Because the main quality I'm noticing with all of the conversations going on here is that there is a boundlessness to it all. Um, and like I said, those containers aren't there. They're not functioning. Um, and there's this sense of almost free fall. Um, and I've been thinking about this a lot moving through the last few weeks and moving into this Aquarian energy and into this new year after the lunar new year. Um, and I was actually going through reading stuff from the summer months, so like six or seven months ago, and, and comparing it to what I'm feeling now. And one of the big things that's come up for me is this feeling of being on the top of a wave. Uh, just imagine you're in a world of water, which we are, uh, but and, and you're this being, and there's these beautiful, big, bold waves. You know, it's not like a, a storm wave. These are more just like these giant waves that just move and move and move. And you're right at the top of it. But you have no safety equipment. You have no like surfing equipment. The way you surf on this planet maybe isn't the way that you would do it if you are a surfer. Uh, I'm not. But, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's much more of this feeling like you're sitting there, you're riding in conjunction with this wave and you know you keep thinking the wave is going to crash down and you're going to go back to the ground and you're going to go back to the way things were and you're just going to go like even if you back on that beach you know you have a guy that you're not really into or like a job that you're not really into but you're going to go back to the beach when this wave comes down and you're going to go home and it's going to be the same except this time the wave just doesn't stop there is no like 
crashing down onto the shore and just going back. And when we're really connected to uh, our greatest potential, right? So, and we've, we've made maybe peace with some of our old constrictions, some of our old beliefs that we had to contain ourselves, that we weren't going to make it We weren't going to survive if we opened ourselves up to this world. We let that go a little bit and we ride into this full moon with that energy. Initially, I think some of the side effects of that can be this feeling of riding this wave that doesn't come down and almost having like um, vertigo, not physically, maybe physically, but in the way you feel about yourself moving forward. Um, And this will especially be, I mean, this can be true for any range of things. You know, uh, in my case, I am doing better than ever in my life. And not to like show off or anything, I'm not trying to show off. Things are going very well for me. I'm very connected to the path that I have going on. There's a lot of really warm, wonderful things all around me helping me out and, and saying, yeah, let's keep moving forward. Um, and interestingly enough, that has caused me to have to sit with the discomfort of being this free, this free in the piece of it. So if you have been in a, in a trajectory of getting lighter and freer and free, and you're starting to hit into that, you may be noticing you're feeling some of that wildness where it's like, how do I take this in? But this can also apply even if you've just taken off one thing off your, your must do list that isn't really serving you anymore. Or if you have released an old belief, you can feel as though you are naked, unarmored, and floating through space out of control without that damper on your life. Um, We can sometimes get a little addicted to the safety of something that keeps us small. And you know, I'm not trying to like shade anybody, believe me, I'm there, I'm right there with you. Like, uh, it's very comforting. Um, it's very comforting to know, okay, well, this is all I got. Okay. It's, it's a feeling that you are safe within that and you're doing your best, but that's all you can do. You don't really have to push any harder. And when you, when you take that off, right? Like who are you without these containers? Who are you without these obligations? What are you, what is your soul? Uh, what is your passion? What lights you up if you have none of those things? And we start getting into the territory of the unbearable lightness of being, right? That's a Milan Kundera book. Uh, it's really beautiful. (laughs) It's, it's a darker book, but uh, this whole idea of, you know, that lightness. At first, I think there can be a sense of just overwhelm with it. So I just kind of want to throw that in there with a full moon like this, is that there's a there's an energy of that boundlessness and that wild child. And for any part of yourself that may be still reeling from some of the work we were doing in December and January, and is feeling a little cautious, this moon could feel like, whoa, you know, right in your face, like, boom, wild child's in the in the driver's seat now, and that could be a little alarming. But as we know, uh, full moons often are about uh, culmination, um, seeing something for what it is, seeing it in its wholeness, uh, seeing it with clear uh, exact eyes. And this is our first full moon since um, the full moon eclipse we had in Cancer, right? So we're also continuing to kind of step out of the eclipse energy. And who are we now? Who are we now as we left something behind? Uh, And I honestly think too that when we expand, when we step onto that wave and we are riding it, and we have let go of a version of ourselves, it is completely understandable to both feel immaculate joy at that boundlessness and in that hope and in that field of dreamy vision that Neptune is bringing into the mixture, the moon is bringing into the mixture, even Mars is bringing into the mixture. Uh, and, and Venus is going to be over in Aries too. So we have all this fire lighting up our dream worlds. That's 
there is a euphoria to that. There's a lightness to that. Play with it. Let yourself write up your dreams. Let it be passionate, romantic, right? Because I've been focusing a lot on like the fear of boundlessness, but you also find this is a moon that you really do feel that playful boundlessness. But also understand if you're somebody who's feeling quite tender during this full moon, that grief can come with that as well. Now, I think understanding grief in different ways is important culturally to us right now because we had a kind of a grief denial time for a little while and that's been very popular at different in different decades and centuries um understanding that grief doesn't always have to look like days and days of hiding in bed it can but it can also look like moments of recognition it can also look like you're laughing and you are happy and you are passionate And there's a moment where you tear up and you feel the release of something. And so I think there may be, for some of you out there, a dialogue between those two things. But here's where that full circle comes around and things meet. Uh, To have both in conversation like that helps us to to be really present in our lives and and to not be so perfectionist about what happiness really looks like. so all of that's coming through and uh this is this is a moon you know yes you may be feeling grief or you may be feeling the nervousness about this expansive riding the wave but i think this is also a moon to really pay attention look around at where you are now give yourself some credit for how much has changed even in two months even in one month and kind of note where you are now because you're somewhere different than you were and there's going to be a lot of clues around you about where you're going next and what that creative wild child is doing um they they are in the driver's seat right now and they will be in the driver's seat as we work our way through aquarius season and as we work our way into really rich vibrant territory um and where we were doing all this parental stuff with guilt, with shame, with fear, with unworthiness before, none of that applies here with this full moon in Leo, which I think is a breath of fresh air, right? Okay, like, it's good to have structure, it's good to have parental, like self parenting guidance. And it's also really good to remember that we can take off some of that weight sometimes and we can let ourselves be free and run free and bad things aren't just going to necessarily happen to us because we decide to lift off that weight okay so i'm going to pull a few cards here as usual to end our discussion um yeah i have been so I've been very much doing the work of being completely euphoric and happy and contented and like really connected to my path. And I cry every day. Uh, And, you know, it's not like I cry all day, every day, but I cry every day. (laughs) And, um, and it's, it's about little things and big things. You know, I've been getting rid of like old artwork uh, that informed a different part of my life. You know, I'm donating it or giving it to friends, things that, you know, I can't take with me on this next chapter. I have been, uh, you know, spending quality time with people that I'm not going to get to see very much moving forward into these next spaces. Uh, ooh, the strength card popped right out. I love it very Leo moon, right? Um, And so, you know, and, and part of that boundlessness, that openness is that the river of life carries you forward, that wave carries you forward, it keeps carrying you and you find that old, like literal settings, people, uh, habits are suddenly receding behind you. And you're like, Oh, wait, there they go. Like, uh, but I mean, you're like, yeah, this is feeling good. But whoa, that just went and that's a little alarming and it's good to be checking in and just noticing where you're feeling that rather than grabbing onto a whole bunch of branches and scratching up your hands to just like note what's happening six of pentacles balance very interesting there's a very balanced energies in many ways there's a lot of um perspective going on in both the strength card and the six of pentacles one more and the page of pentacles okay So, you know, what I'm seeing here too is I haven't tapped into this too much as I I keep talking about this idea of the river of life and riding this giant wave, but this is very creative energy. The Leo Aquarius axis axis is all about authenticity. It's all about authentic self-expression. Now, you know, you don't have to be 
literally an artist that draws or paints or dances or sings. I mean, you might be all of those things. Uh, but this is also about creative self-expression in the way that we give to others, the way we give to ourselves, the way we authentically say yes or no to things. Um, this is not a moon that is going to be about obligation. And it's and it's not a self-editing energy whatsoever. This is a very blunt, talkative, clear energy. This is the, when a three-year-old has an idea or opinion, they tell you, right? Now that I'm saying all Leos are three-year-olds, by the way, I'm just saying this energy is very playful. It's very blunt in that kind of natural, wild way that we get trained out of as we get older in life. We get trained out of that authenticity. We get trained it's bad. We get trained our sensitivity is embarrassing and we cry too much and we should keep that to ourselves. We get trained that we are supposed to just go to the dinner with the people we don't really like because that's polite. We get trained to uh, not really say, ooh, that's making me a little uncomfortable uh, and just go along with it. Um, we get trained to do all these little things, these little moments are told to us like over and over again, subtly in social situations and also sometimes outright. And we get to this point where we start to self-edit and we start to believe that if we don't self-edit, we're in peril we will be destroyed. And <laughs> I'm looking at these cards because this is all about like very basic authenticity, I would say. Like, and I don't mean that in a bad way, just the base level of just getting to be you in whatever messiness and weirdness that you are or you consider yourself messy or weird, but like, whatever that looks like, you know, you have like maybe a job that like, you're like, yeah, I'm going to be ready to move out of it. But like, I'm here right now. And I'm working with it. Uh, you know, just maybe you're, you're in a phase where you're like wanting to stay home more, and you're not feeling hyper social and wanting to go to all the events, just be like, yeah, that's where I am right now. Or maybe you are feeling super hyper social, and you're not feeling like meditating every day, and just letting yourself be and taking off some of that weight. This is very down to earth energy in that way. The other thing that I notice, and the message that comes through with these three cards is investments. I think we can only make really good energetic investments, like truly connected energetic investments, when we are feeling that those investments are coming from the headspace of being who we are, where we are. Also, investments we make when we feel we are on that wave, and we're just writing it and we're paying attention, make sense. Even if we don't understand everything. Where are you putting your energy? Where are you letting your that fear of your authenticity hold you back and and have you be have you put investments of energy into things that feel little icky. And like I said, I say this all the time, but you know, sometimes you hear somebody say something like this, like you should just live free flow in the moment, man. It's so good. Like, why aren't you just giving everything up in your life and being authentic to who you are? I'm not necessarily talking about those huge things because some of you, yes, but what I'm talking about are those little self edits we do every single day. Sure, sometimes a white lie is helpful to somebody if they don't need to know all the information, sure. But like, they're really subtle. And we don't always catch ourselves when we are cutting ourselves off, when we're cutting ourselves down. And just not saying like, like somebody, <laughs> you know, ordering for you at a restaurant or something and ordering something you don't like, and you just sitting there and saying, Oh, well, I guess I'll just eat this. I mean, that's just an example. But Actually, no one's ever done that. <laughs> Nobody's ever tried to order for me because I'm a little like, uh, I'm a fire sign girl, you know. I'm, I'm in touch with my inner masculine. You better believe I know how to order for myself. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, that's just an example, right? Uh, there's so many little, and they're, and they're very subtle. They can be a lot subtler than that. I know I catch myself all the time in moments where I just want to be nice. Um, you know, I'm somebody who wants to be cheerful and helpful to people and happy for people and in their corner and available all the time. 
And that's some BS because I'm also a very sensitive person who needs rest, who gets tired, who um, really values my Virgo moon time of meditation and quiet and just like absolute quiet. And so when I'm like, you know, constantly editing myself, thinking that my survival is based on me being this vibrant piece of perfection all the time, I'm not being authentic. I'm not being authentic. And, you know, authenticity doesn't always have to be about the performance, right? We don't have to go out and find our friends and be like, I'm being me. A lot of times authenticity really is sitting by yourself in the quiet, right? So these things are getting challenged and the investments that are being asked to be made of you, from you, out of you, um, as you kind of look forward into this, this big, brilliant year that we still have most of ahead. Where are you putting those investments? They have to come from this childlike heart of the Leo energy of the Aquarian energy. And the final note I want to say, you know, I haven't really talked details about these cards. because I really wanted to stay big on the macro lens with this reading. Um, the other thing I just want to add in here with these vibrant, wild energies that are so much about being honest with yourself and who you are and how you want to create is pay attention also to where you edit your desires. We've talked about this before over the last few months, um, but that whole idea of, you know, you want a process to go smoothly. You want to put an application in and get a yes. And I find it amazing how much we all do this, you know, so let's just, let's just make that an example, an application to a job or a school. And, you know, you're like, I want to put this application in and feel really good about it and have it go really smoothly and have my, my answer come in really easily, really on time. And how quickly we're like, but yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Like it probably won't be, you know, it'll probably take six more months than I think it's going to take. So, oh, well, you know, it's, and okay, sure. The realist in there is saying that, and you may even turn that around and pretend it's a positive and say, I'm just going with the flow. It's okay if it's six months, but what's really happening there is you're, you're, you know, putting your wish out into the world. You're putting your creativity out into the world and you're saying, but, but reel it back in a little bit. And it's a habit that can really affect your life because it's how we're thinking about ourselves. Um, thinking about, uh, what we really want to be. And the, that's the final note I have for this moon is that because Leo Aquarius is so much about authentically showing up all the way in your life, like commit, own who you want to be, you know, don't have step in and then say, mm, I don't know if I'm allowed. Own who you want to be. Maybe all the elements aren't right there with you, but own it. Own it fully and, and, and embrace it, you know? Um, and I think sometimes these ideas of perfection, of performance get so in the way of just, just owning that this is what we want. We don't know, you know, we're going to make blunders or we're maybe not going to show up perfectly every single day the way that our ideal self is supposed to show up. But we have to own the visionary energy that we have inside of us. And this moon is just going to not take any other answer. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Like I said, honesty is really big here. Honesty and courage. Uh, the Leo energy is very much about the courage of living vulnerable, of living authentically, of living seen for who you truly are. Uh, and that starts with ourselves, just seeing ourselves and accepting that, right? <sighs> Uh, like I said, I am writing this with you all. I have been really paying attention to coming out of this really deep dungeon digging that we were doing into the light again and re-agreeing to be authentically who I am and really own my leadership and my and my presence in this world and not even just you know yes with you all and I'm so grateful for all of you and the connection we have but also you know in my partnership in in my friendships in all of that like just owning here I am um, and really re-agreeing to that in the new energy that we have in 2020. Um, I'm going to be going a lot more into, I know I keep saying this, but I really want to welcome you more into like my personal process on Patreon. 
um, in the coming months. I'm going to be in London starting in February. And I'm going through a really big personal revolution and I want to welcome you more into that. So if you're interested in being a part of that journey, you can join me over on Patreon. And of course, I'm going to be doing the weekly astro write-ups, uh, sometimes discussions and the Mercury retrograde for February, which is coming up shortly after this full moon and all the, the resources there for those of you looking for tools when it comes to the new moons, the full moons the astrology every week, but also just joining me as like this human being that I am and where I struggle and where I'm hopeful and where I'm finding inspiration. I'm going to be doing so much more with that in the coming months and I'm really excited to share it with you. So if you're interested in joining me there, I will leave the Patreon link below. A uh, thank you to those of you who've already joined me. Um, I will also leave my website below my email. Um, like I said, my calendar's rolling open. So like I'll be opening up sessions every few weeks. So you'll want to keep an eye out for that because they are opening slowly but surely in rhythm with me as I keep moving forward and of course I'm wearing Pink Loon's gorgeous jewelry and she's one of the people that um, I don't get to hang out with as much in the coming months and years ahead and it's been a lot of like emotion around that too because she's just one of my best friends and you know life the river of life takes us forward into big bold new things of course we'll always be connected on the uh emotional spiritual plane um and we'll always talk obviously too but uh go check out pink loon's jewelry uh i'm verbose tonight but um i love you guys so much have a beautiful leo full moon i'm gonna be writing it right along with you i think it's gonna be amazing let yourself be expansive let yourself be authentic believe that you can you can really thrive without those little containers holding you down and uh just feel it just try it out uh, i will see you very soon for all sorts of goodies uh, and if you haven't checked out your monthly reading for february uh, you can go check that out on my videos. I will see you all very soon.